Maria, victims are struggling for basic needs. And this, and of course, him. But there's something else, something more sinister that's lurking in the background. Some call it a post-antibiotic apocalypse. She's talking about antibiotic resistant bacteria or superbugs. Superbugs kill and they're on the rise. And they're preparing to annihilate us. Every year in the US, 2 million people contract an infection that does not respond to antibiotics. Over 20,000 of them die. Superbugs are on track to kill 10 million people a year by 2050. Cancer doesn't even kill that many people. And this isn't just a problem for the West. The World Health Organization says superbugs are one of the biggest threats to global health, affecting rich and poor countries alike. Patients are moving you know, across the world you know, overnight, and so are the bacteria. Britain's chief medical officer claims they present a national security threat on the scale of terrorism. So how did this happen? Well, there hasn't been a new class of antibiotics discovered since the 1980s. We tend to use the easy ones first before we start reaching for new drugs. That penicillin your doctor might prescribe you when you have a gnarly infection, it actually dates back to World War II. And part of this has to do with economics. Introducing new drugs to the market sometimes can cost upwards of a billion dollars. But the return on investment for antibiotics isn't high enough to justify that kind of money. No, we have a business model that is not really working. We have very high costs for development of antibiotics and then the course might be five days or ten days. Think of it this way. Drug companies can sell you a cocktail of antibiotics for something like a hundred bucks and you may only need it once. But chemotherapy? That's a consistent cancer treatment that could set you back tens of thousands of dollars. And that's why drug companies have been more likely to fund cancer research than, say, new antibiotics. And the antibiotics we do have are being overprescribed. There is a huge overbelief in antibiotics. I mean, you should only take it when it's really necessary. There's a lot of antibiotics that are given for things such as viral and respiratory that is really doing nothing except for propagating more resistance. Of the 154 million antibiotic prescriptions given out in the US every year, at least 30% are totally unnecessary. And if you're not getting your antibiotics from a doctor, you're probably getting them from your food. About 70% of antibiotics meant to treat humans are actually sold to livestock farmers. These farmers use the medications not only to prevent illnesses within their animals, but also to fatten them up. The animals can then become host to drug-resistant superbugs. So when we eat them, or when we're exposed to their feces, those superbugs find their way into our bodies. But don't lose hope just yet. There are ways to fight back. Here's one way. Only take antibiotics when they're absolutely necessary. They do cure antibacterial infections, but they're only important for the most serious infections. Fewer antibiotics mean bacteria have fewer chances to develop a resistance to them. Countries like Sweden and Denmark educate their citizens about the dangers of overusing antibiotics. As a result, they have some of the lowest rates of antibiotic resistance in the world. It took 20 years and we're not done yet. <laughs> Meanwhile, 36% of Americans said in the survey that antibiotics were effective against the common cold. Fake news. I think the most important thing is for people to change their expectations. If the physician is saying, you know, I don't think you have a bacterial infection, or I think you have an infection that will get better on its own, you really trust that opinion and not demand an antibiotic. And then there's agriculture. The FDA has finally taken steps to ban certain antibiotics, not all, for being used on livestock. Even fast food establishments are falling in line. McDonald's announced on Wednesday it will stop buying chickens that are fed antibiotics used on people. There are also a couple unorthodox solutions on the horizon. Scientists are extracting chemicals from the deadly venom of snakes, scorpions, and spiders to fight superbugs. And they've already had some success in killing bacteria like E. coli and staph. Then there are phages, viruses that implant their DNA inside host bacteria. Then they duplicate that DNA until, well, the bacteria explode and die. Think aliens. But the fight against superbugs is never ending in a way. Humans discover a new drug and bacteria find a way to resist it. It's a cold war that never stops. We just need to be one step ahead of the game.